A few months before we did Deuce of Fish, I directed a Pam Gems play called The Project. And it was on at the Soho Poly Theatre, which was, a, at that time, it was a really tiny theatre, which had started at a polytechnic, which is why it's called the Soho Poly. And the woman who ran it, Verity Bargate, she was very interested in Pam. She wanted me to direct the play. And I remember when they first came to me about directing it, and I'm not sure how Pam knew about me or had chosen me, but Pam really wanted me to direct it. And I was pregnant and I said, well, you know, I can't do it at the minute. And then when the baby's born, you know, if I'm breastfeeding, I don't want to have to give up breastfeeding to direct a play. And both Pam and Verity said, no, we'll wait for you. We'll wait for whenever you feel you can do it. So I said, okay, I'll do it when the baby's five months old. And I did, uh, it was lunchtime theater. And that was a huge success, enormous success. It was only 55 seats, but still you couldn't get in, you know, it was sold out, which was fantastic. So it kind of was a natural thing for me to then be asked to do Dead Fish or Deuce of Fish, Das and Vi. At that time, Michael Rudman was running Hampstead Theatre with my husband, David Orkin, as the executive or as the general manager. And they felt that it was a shame that it was called Dead Fish because then you knew that she would die by the end. I think Dead Fish actually is a pun on other things as well, uh, female. They s felt strongly that it was, it was not a great title for that reason. I think it was quite difficult to think of a title. And Deuce of Fish, Sass and Vi did work, but it was very difficult to explain it to people. You know, people would say, what is that? Because they wouldn't even realize it was names of women, you know. And we used to call it Tuna Fish on Seeded Rye. <laughs> Deuce of Fish, Stas and Vi, yeah. To our huge surprise, it, it was a, hu a big sensation, you know, all the papers really loved it and it went into the West End, into the Mayfair Theatre. I think it played there for about five months and the only reason it really closed was that one of the actresses was very pregnant by then and we were still trying to hide it. And the producer, Michael Codron, felt he didn't really want to recast. I think maybe it was just starting to, to dip in the box office. I'm not really sure. But I remember the actresses saying to me not long ago that when they were performing in that play, everybody came to see it. It was, it was like every celebrity who came to London had to go and see Deuce Fish, Stas and Vi. And I think it was something to do with the fact that it was this sort of insight into a female world which felt uh, uh, original. Do Fish, Stas and Vi, I, I didn't see the recent versions, but it was interesting, a young director that I know was asked to direct a reading of Do Fish, Stas and Vi. And she was directing the reading and she said to me, oh, she said, I can't get on with this play at all. And I don't understand that speech she has about Rosa Luxemburg. And, you know, she's, she, this was a woman in her 30s and she, she didn't get it. She just didn't get it. And I thought, oh, what a pity, because if I directed the reading, maybe I could make it clearer to people how the play works and what its impact was. But it was so much of its time that now maybe a lot of what it's saying seems a bit cliched. So maybe you have to wait for a period when people are more interested in looking back and saying, oh, my goodness, is that... Is that what it was like then? Maybe it's too recent. And so people think, oh, you know, that's a bit old fashioned, isn't it? You know, to see women like that. Pam obviously was always interested in Rosa Luxemburg and she knew, I don't know how well she knew Buzz Goodbody, but Buzz Goodbody had made a huge impression because she was a strong female who was making her way as a theater director, which was very unusual. And she had committed suicide and it was, it was thought that she had committed suicide for personal reasons after the breakup of a relationship. And Pam, I think, was inspired by Buzz Goodbody. I don't think she thought she was telling Buzz's story, but I think she was inspired by her to write the play. On some level, maybe she was trying to understand the suicide. And then after that, I worked with Pam quite a bit. My husband, when my husband was running Hampstead Theatre, on his own now after Michael Rudman left to go to the National. 
he commissioned Pam to do a version of Uncle Vanya, Chekhov's Uncle Vanya, which I directed at Hampstead. And we had a fantastic cast. We had Ian Holm, who was a big star in those days, and Nigel Hawthorne, who was also a big television star. And that was an enormous success as well. I worked very closely with her on the translation. You know, we would spend a lot of time together working it over. And I think we, I think we had a literal translation at the same time. When David and I moved to Leicester and he was running the Leicester Haymarket, one of the first pieces that he commissioned was for Pam to do a version of The Cherry Orchard, Chekhov's The Cherry Orchard, which we did in Leicester. And that was also a, an enormous success, which was really thrilling because it's not easy to sell Chekhov in Leicestershire, but we, we were able to. The reviews were fantastic because one of the main reviewers from London came up to see it. And one of his quotes was something wonderful is happening in Leicester. You know, so everyone was very proud because we were just, David was just starting his regime at the, the Leicester Haymarket and it was a, it was a great, starting thing. It was one of the starting events, you know, that made a big splash, which was lovely. I suppose the interesting thing about Pam really is that she was, um, her approach to her material was always so original. You know, and it's, she had a very extraordinary developed mind with a huge curiosity about the world and people and science. She would often think that a performer was extraordinary and being overlooked and think, oh, I, would, I could write about this or I could write about that. She had, such a, she had such broad interest in the world, history, science, that I don't think that she was really only interested in women. You know, I mean, I'm not even sure that she would think I'm a feminist playwright. She, 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 she was interested in extraordinary women. She was interested in women doing bold, extraordinary things in the world, whether it was writing or whether it was po political activism and how you, how you managed to do that if you were a woman who maybe wanted to have children or if you did have children or if your, your relationship with a man or another woman was somehow emotionally dragging you away from what it was you were trying to do in the world. You know, I mean, that, that, those were the sorts of things that interested her, interested her. But if she then wanted to write about Danton, I would have thought she'd probably always been interested in that. I think with Stanley that she was prompted to write something for Anthony Sher. You know, I, I think that what she always said to me was, there was a production of Uncle Vanya that was at the National Theatre, and there were a lot of fantastic actors in it, including Ian McKellen. And I think four of them were nominated for Olivier Awards for that Uncle Vanya. It was her version of Uncle Vanya, the one that she and I had worked on, was then chosen later to be the one at the National. And Anthony Sher was the one person in the cast who wasn't nominated for an Olivier. And she just thought, I'm going to write something for, for him, you know. So she, was, she, she loved actors and she loved performers and she loved big, extraordinary, bold performers, which is why she loved Piaf, you know. And, uh, and so she just wanted to write something for, for, for Tony Sher, which she, which she did. So that came from the desire to make a piece for a particular performer that she was inspired by. You know, sometimes it takes years before a playwright comes round again, you know, and, and suddenly everybody becomes interested in Somerset Maugham again, or, or there was a period when Noel Coward was out of fashion and then everyone became very interested in him again. So, you know, Pam Chems may may, you know, eventually be recognized. Mm -hmm.